Coming up on the Paul Report, we're talking to Dr. Elizabeth Clyde from Clyde's Animal Clinic in Mattoon all about animal dentistry and what you need to know. When do you need to take your pet for a tooth cleaning and what should you be doing every day? We'll be answering those questions on the Paul Report today, so stay tuned. Production for the Paw Report is made possible by Midas Auto Service and Tire in Charleston and Mattoon. Midas repairs both cars and light trucks. Midas cares about our community and thanks you for being a responsible pet owner. You deserve the Midas Touch. Hello and welcome to the Paul Report. I'm your host, Kate Pleasant, and today I'm joined by Dr. Elizabeth Clyde from Clyde's Animal Clinic in Mattoon, and we're going to talk about animal dentistry. So she's gonna kind of give us the 411 on that and everything you need to know. So thank you for coming to the show today, Dr. Clyde. Well, thanks for having me. And so when we talk about animal dentistry, you know, I assume it's mostly cats, dogs, any animal could probably have their teeth clean, but we'll probably just cover the cats and the dogs. So can you tell me first, you know, a little bit of general information about animal dentistry? Okay, well, this we could talk all day about <laughs> <laughs> about teeth and, and dogs and cats. Um, we really need to start as far as animal dentistry and all about the teeth, all about the mouth. Dogs mature have 42 teeth in their mouth and cats have 30. Okay, that's so still a lot. <laughs> that, that's a lot than most, than most people mm -hmm. as far as with that. So a common misconception is that, oh, well, my, my dog or cat eats dry, crunchy food mm -hmm. that cleans its teeth and are shocked when they have problems. And it would be, you know, equivalent, like if we didn't brush our teeth, you know, every day, or if we just ate carrot sticks, I mean, we would still get plaque and build up on our teeth and right. it's just bacteria. So um, some foods are better than other foods as far as with health in the mouth, but it isn't going to not it's prevent not a, a problem. Solve all problem. No, okay. no. Okay. That's good to know. Um, and I bet the, the, the best thing that we could start with kittens and puppies is just play with their mouth. Okay. And rub your fingers, you know, in over their, their teeth. Have them accustomed to having your finger in, the, in their mouth. And people are going to be like, okay, they're teething and they're chewing on my finger, <laughs> but you know, just, just small amount. So it's mm -hmm. not a frightening experience for them. Right. Okay. So kind of, it's just like the socialization, you know, trying to play with their paws and things like that. It's the same with the mouth. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's, that's definitely a good thing to know. Should you brush their teeth? Do you, should you, just like we do with people, we brush our teeth a couple of times a day, probably. Should you brush a dog or a cat's teeth? You, that brushing is the best. So people are like, oh my gosh, you know, how long is that going to take? You know, you put the timer for your kids. Okay, when the sand goes down two minutes, <laughs> it is not to that extreme with pets. First of all, we can give them a flavored toothpaste. So it's like chicken flavor, beef flavor, fish flavor. Beef flavor at our house. Yes, <laughs> and, and beef and chicken are like their favorite. But you can squeeze out just like a pea size amount and just rub it on their teeth and gums and not have to put it on a toothbrush. You can start off just giving it to them. You know, if it's your nighttime ritual, they're watching them, say the six o'clock news or, you know, EIU shows sure. and that, uh -huh. and give that to them and without any handling and they're like, oh, yummy. And so then they're, then they're programmed. Okay, that's my treat. If you do that every evening or every day at the same time of every day, they're creatures of habit. So they're gonna come to expect that and it tastes good. And then step two, is actually maybe using your finger, you know, to, to squeegee in there. And like when we were kids, you could rub your teeth until they squeaked, uh -huh. you know, with that. Yeah. That's basically what we're trying to do. Okay. You can use toothbrushes. We have little finger toothbrushes that are very easy, so you're not going to poke in their right. mouth. You could use a gauze square that has some abrasiveness to it, an uh, infant toothbrush. Yeah, that's what I thought of. I have a two-year-old, so we've seen those little, mm -hmm. you know, little finger toothbrushes or some of the softer bristled toothbrushes. And, and if dogs have, or cats, or you know, especially for a cat, because their mouth is considerably smaller, mm -hmm. you might just want to stay with your finger and wrap the gauze around it to do, to do that. So we're doing just a um, removing the plaque, you know, moving that away before it has time to accumulate. And you might look in their mouth and like, oh, well, their teeth all look white. I don't see anything but it's there. Sure, and it's like people, I would assume, you mm -hmm. know, uh, we, just because we can't see it doesn't mean that it isn't there. Right. So then if it, the plaque stays on and you get layer upon layer, then it turns into tartar or calculus. 
and it is it's hard I mean you we can pop that off and it's like it's a rock wow. so it, it builds up on there okay why we don't want any of that on there same with people is that it gets under the gum and causes periodontal disease and what that means is that it just erodes that ligament that holds the tooth in place that's kind of a sum up of right. what periodontal disease is. So then the tooth is gonna get loose, you're gonna have pain, it's gonna decay, and then you have, have some, some big problems there. So mm -hmm. dogs and cats are very stoic. So like if we had a little you know toothache and we're babies about it, right. they can go on and on maybe with a little problem that you wouldn't realize until it gets a big problem okay. because you know, they can't say, hey, my, my tooth hurts. Something's hurting me a little bit in the back here. They, mm -hmm. they can't really give you that indication. Now, some things that they can do. Right, that was going to be my next yeah, that point, question. You might be like, okay, there's a problem. Cat breath kind of smells. Some dog breath smells. But if you're like, okay, that really doesn't smell right. I mean, if it's just stinkier than the normal, mm -hmm. that is an indication that we probably have an infection in there that needs immediate attention. They might drool. Um, or, or just be more slobbery. They may not want to eat their food. They could stop eating. Mm -hmm. um, pain as far as being, you know, handled around their, their mouth. Or um, cats are one that they might go to pick up food and then spit it back out because mm. their, their teeth hurt. Okay. And that, that can be some indication. So a couple of little signs there to watch for. That's mm -hmm. good to know. Because like you said, if they aren't able to express pain, we have to have some indication. So um, how often should we be having our dog's teeth, you know, cleaned in the veterinary office? Well, and that's going to depend on if they started as a puppy. Mm -hmm. um, by age three, a lot of dogs and cats already have some buildup as far as on their, their teeth with the plaque. Mm -hmm. So if you can start as a puppy, come along at each yearly checkup, they can assess, you know, how much periodontal disease or, or how much of that plaque is building up. Are the gums red? They shouldn't be red. Mm -hmm. And so if the gums are red, they need to be cleaned. They can get like really red lines around the gums in cats especially, they need to be cleaned. Um, the black line on the tartar that usually, like if you have the gum and then you have the tooth and there'll be a black leading edge, okay. that is um, where that bacteria is accumulating. And if you see that, that needs to be be cleaned off. So those are some things to be looking for in their mm -hmm. mouth. But if you brush, you know, once a day or so, like you said, would that mostly take care of that? It can. We have we have pets that they get their teeth cleaned and they're like, okay, um, what can I do so I don't have to do this every year? Because mm -hmm. in severe mouths, some of them, if they can't do home care, may have to be cleaned every six months. If they have significant problems, some once a year. But we want to work with the pet owners so then they can do a lot of that at home mm -hmm. because it's not like, okay, cleaned them today. We're, we don't have to touch their mouth for 365 days. And right. we all know that's what would be in a wreck if we didn't brush our teeth but <laughs> once a year. <laughs> that could be bad. <laughs> Other things that they can, can do at home, say they're just like, okay, I'm scared to brush my dog's teeth or I didn't train them as a puppy or I didn't train my cat as a kitten mm -hmm. and they aren't too keen about me in there brushing, handling their mouth. There are some water additives that help to kill the bacteria. Plaque is about 80% bacteria. Hmm. So if we can kill off 80% of it, that's gonna make a difference. Um, there are a lot of chew things that they can chew on that are helpful. So a lot of people are like, oh, well, I give my dog you know, treats that cleans its teeth. Right. And you know, a dry, crunchy, you know, like a milk bone biscuit is like crunch, crunch, gone. Right. That did not clean its teeth. Sure, that'd be the equivalent of brushing your teeth for three seconds. <laughs> right, <laughs> doop, doop, gone. Right. So, um, you know, rawhide, as long as your dog doesn't chew on that and try and choke on it. Mm -hmm. Greenies are a new treat, it's been around, not new, but it's been around for a while that have some um, cleaning action with them. Some dogs want to eat them whole, <laughs> and that one won't clean their teeth, but two can cause some um, blockage, you know, with, mm -hmm. with that. Um, something that they're gonna be happy and chew on for two or three minutes, you know, in that brushing time period. Um, pig's ears, dogs love those. Right. Again, as long as it's not crunch, crunch, gone. Right. And that prolong, you know, they're holding it and they're, they're chewing, they're mm -hmm. working those back teeth. Now their canine teeth, which they all have four of those, those are not chewing teeth. Those are kind of, you know, bite the mailman teeth. Oh, I see. And they're the easiest ones for us to see to clean. So if you can 
wipe on those, clean on those, and then the biscuits and that can chew. What about those dental bones? You yes. know, I, they have the ones, they're a little harder and they say they have additives in them. Are those effective? Those can be, again, if, as long as it's not crunch, crunch gone, that they are <laughs> chewing on them. And they do, they have um, a lot of foods are coming out with some additives that's in the coating on the food okay. that um, is killing the plaque. And that's what a lot of those additives are. If they have chlorhexidine in them, um, the CET brands are really good with that because that's like the toothpaste being released while they're chewing on it. Um, there are some tartar food actually and tartar treats that are a big matrix so it doesn't break apart or crumble. The dog actually has to bite or cat has to bite into it, you know, over and over again. Oh, that's interesting. And so it's kind of squeegeeing their mm -hmm. teeth. And I mix that in with my dog's and cat's food half and half because you know, am I brushing their teeth every day? Probably not either. So I have to rely on some so of even those. Even veterinarians don't yeah. brush their dog's teeth every day. Do, do, do what we say, not what we, That's we right. do. That's right. You try to practice what you preach, but you know. So that's something you could do if you maybe can't help them out every day. Get right. some of those foods and um, treats with the additives in them. And those are safe, relatively safe. It doesn't mm -hmm. do anything digestively or. Every dog and cat is different. So um, like greenies have wheat in them. And we have a lot of dogs and cats that are allergic to wheat. So that may not be the right one for you. But there, there are other options out there mm. as far as, as chewing. But so just finding out what works for your pet. What, what works and that has that prolonged chewing time. Okay. And so if you bring your dog in and it's assessed or your cat and, you know, maybe you at your office say, oh, I think they probably need a cleaning. What's that process like for the animal? There, what we, we do is we check out their blood panels. It is an anesthetic event. So mm -hmm. they're going to have to go under general anesthesia to have that um, procedure done. So we make sure all their organ function is fine and they have an IV in, they're intubated, they're on gas. We actually have an endotracheal tube in, which is intubation. So when we're cleaning, none of the debris, none of the water, you know, is going to go down into their, their lungs. That makes sense. So with that, so they have all their teeth cleaned, all sides of their teeth cleaned. Um, assess for pockets. So kind of like the tip of the iceberg, what we see of the teeth, sometimes we don't know what's going down be beneath the gums. Mm -hmm. And if you're ever at the, at the dentist and the hygienist is counting, you know, one, two, three, they're actually checking pocket depth. Right, and I know they stick that pick down mm -hmm. in there, you know, and they push to see if there's any pitting. So right. is that kind of what you're doing there? Exactly. So we don't want more than say a three millimeter pocket depth. And we can be going along a lot of their teeth have three roots. Um, some have two, some have one, but like we can lose that probe, you know, in a root and it's like, oh my gosh, you know, there's a giant hole here. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of offices have actual dental x-ray for dogs and cats. So just the same at your dental office and it's that little bitty film that's digital. Mm -hmm. And we take pictures of the teeth so then we can see, is there bone loss? Is there an abscess? You know, what's going on. Okay. And if it's found that there's a problem, you know, can a dog or a cat get a filling, I guess? <laughs> what do you do to remedy problems in the mouth? Well, carious lesions or cavities aren't very common in dogs and cats. Now, um, a client just this morning commented about she doesn't feed her dog candy. I'm like, well, you know, no, you shouldn't feed your dog candy. But she <laughs> right. says, well, a lot of people feed their dog candy, like hard candy, hard candy? or licorice or things like that. And that's just going to get stuck back in the grooves like it would in ours. And I've actually had dogs that have had deep cavities. And if they're into the pulp of the tooth, which we can see that on the x-ray, so that's like the living part of the tooth where the blood vessels and the nerves are, um, it can't really be repaired unless you do a root canal, okay? okay? So some, mo most of those carious lesions are so deep we have to remove move the tooth. Now, if they needed a, a root canal, that is more of a specialty dental procedure. And we're very fortunate to have um, two board certified veterinary dentists in our area. They're not very many in the country, but mm -hmm. one's up at the U of I at the vet school and one's over in Decatur. Okay. So um, we have those options around you here. You have those options. Now, that, that's an expensive option if it's questionable whether that tooth is already infected and just like this can happen with people you mm -hmm. get a root canal uh it didn't take and right you gotta have the tooth pulled mm -hmm. that can happen um 
a lot of times that tooth is very uncomfortable that it's better you know removed with that so okay. and so then is the the animal just lose the tooth because I assume you know like people you can't really put in implants or bridges or something like that in an animal I, I pr I'm sh they can really <laughs> they can do some of those those things most of the time we do remove them um, you know it's an actual surgery doing a gum flap and drilling out the different roots and then mm -hmm. suturing everything back back in together. And I've had dogs that have come in and their and cats that their mouths are just full of rotten teeth and they're kind of older and they're just acting old and acting miserable mm -hmm. and they go home without all those rotten teeth and the people are like, oh my gosh, it's a puppy again. They didn't really realize how much chronic pain Comes was, go was going on in, the, in that mouth mm -hmm. and, and that they didn't really notice it, but it was slow over time. Sure. And again, they don't, they don't tell you. Because they that. can't, right. Um, so is there things that we should be doing or looking for when we have our animals? You know, you mentioned the drooling and things like that, but you know, is there anything we can see in their mouths if we're really looking that might indicate some of these problems? I would, I would just look at the teeth should be white mm -hmm. and their gums should be pink. So okay. anything varying from that, if they're bright pink or really red, that's a problem, and then just any of that yellow plaque buildup on their teeth. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in puppies and kittens, sometimes breeds don't lose their baby teeth. Oh. And we'll have a um, dog that has all its permanent teeth and maybe still half a dozen baby teeth. And if they're not loose, they're not, it's, it's kind of a genetic problem where they didn't lose them as they were supposed to. Mm -hmm. And so we need to remove them because that can cause problems. Um, people do get a little, scared when they start losing their puppy teeth and mm -hmm. you know do I put this in milk no it's mm -hmm. supposed to fall out you know they'll they'll <laughs> lose all those um, with them so that's what they want to look for mm -hmm. uh, little dogs that might um, chew on themselves or you know itching and scratching or if they have a lot of carpet some dogs like to lick carpet and things mm -hmm. they'll get all those fibers wrapped in and around their teeth really and you need need to look look for that it's kind of like you know flip the lip mm -hmm. just look underneath there and see what you can see and they'll do it on the sides but you want to do it on the front for the incisors okay and we have pulled out some <laughs> interesting things yes in interesting <laughs> things yeah we've pulled out parts of toys and wow between, hair from and between fuzz, teeth getting in between teeth and that's why they brought the dog in it was like she didn't act right and there was a bad odor coming from her mouth mm. and she wasn't a nice dog but she actually <laughs> Must have known I was trying to help her right. because she let me pull out this hard piece of plastic toy mm -hmm. out between her teeth. Okay. So, so is there some, is there extensive aftercare after the dogs have had cleanings or root canals or any procedures like that? They shouldn't chew on their hard toys. Um, and, and that's another thing. Some of these hard toys we think are good can be a problem. A, a while back they came out with cow hooves and dogs love to chew on them, mm -hmm. but it broke a bunch of their teeth. Oh, okay. So I think those aren't really too available on the market anymore. Mm -hmm. The deer antlers are a big hit right now for, for chewing. I haven't seen any dogs break their teeth yet on that. So I think they're a little bit softer and more forgiving right. for, for that. But um, you know, after they've had surgery and they've had sutures in their mouth, they, they sh usually their veterinarian's gonna tell them, you know, for seven days or for 14 days, and, after their follow-up, then they'll assess that everything is healed mm -hmm. and do that. But then they can go back to Regular, chewing and playing and same as the way they mm -hmm. would. Okay. And so as a veterinarian, you know, cause this just got me thinking, talking about teeth and everything. You're kind of like a dentist too. And you're kind of like, you know, an orthopedic surgeon sometimes you're kind of like all these things. So is that, you know, difficult? Is there ongoing training for all of that? There, there is as far as our continuing education. And like, I really love dentistry and you know, I've worked with uh, a dentist actually who did a root canal on a pet. We've had, um, dogs that have had braces. We've had ones that have, oh. um, yeah. <laughs> I never <laughs> to, even thought about that. To move their teeth. And like some breeds like Shelties and some of the Collies, their bottom teeth will be really narrow and where they shoot up in the top of the mouth, they mm -hmm. need to go out like that. And so we have to put in a bite plane to, to get the teeth to go on out. Okay. So you can do a little bit or you can do a lot. It just depends on how much you want to to study and advance mm -hmm. into into those different areas. And so. why do you like it so much? You know, I, most people probably think, oh, why would you want your fingers in animal mouths? You know, what's so exciting about that? So what is we, it that you like about the dentistry? We wear gloves. So. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs>
just because it's such a, a, a big difference that you can make. I mean, they come in and their mouths look horrible and the dog feels horrible. And then when you're finished, it's just all sparkly clean and the breath smells great and we've gotten rid of some really obvious problems. So, mm -hmm. and they feel better. I mean, it can really sure. make a difference. I mean, if you thought about a person with mouth pain after a certain amount of time, you know, it's it hurts for us too. So we would definitely want to get something taken out of there and make it feel better. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably the same for animals too. So um, is there any type of way to tell, you know, when you get in there and look how long something's been going on, if it's a problem? Um, it might depend on how much gum recession and has, has come back or just like, sometimes, I mean, the tartar is just caked on, caked mm -hmm. on. It's hard to say, like with a broken tooth, if the, the pulp is still bleeding or red, we know that's, um, you know, recent right. with, with that. And, and by x-rays, we can look at how much bone loss has occurred along like the, the gum recession. Because what happens is the gums are like, I don't want to be near all that yucky bacteria. So they mm -hmm. just keep creeping away, creeping oh. away. And then you have root exposure. So, and then that's, that's more advanced with something like that goes on. Okay, so what are some tips, you know, kind of as we get ready to wrap up here for your everyday care? We'll kind of go back over those before we go today. I would just, um, you know, after watching this show that owners just to get their dog or cat in their lap or, you know, get down there and, and lift up the lip and see what they see. Mm -hmm. If there is redness or tartar, you know, see if the dog would let them just even, you know, have their finger in their mouth. Maybe go get an old wash rag, see if, you know, what, how much they can tolerate. And they can call their veterinarian and get an appointment to assess, is this good, bad, or what, what could they do? Mm -hmm. um, and like you are, you're, you have the beef toothpaste mm -hmm. to get them, get them started with that. Because that can make all the difference. Just uh, get on a schedule instead of just kind of, oh, yeah, I did that once. Right, because they're creatures of habit, just like you said. Dogs really are. They want to go out at the same time. They want to go to bed at the same time. They want to eat at the same time. Mm -hmm. So... I think just making teeth brushing or messing with their mouths part of the routine is probably a great plan too. I can just see it now. There's probably people out there with their fingers in yeah. their dog's mouth as they watch <laughs> this going, what do I see in there? So And reward them. If they've been good, um, give them that treat. You know, sometimes they think the toothpaste is a treat, but mm -hmm. they could have a, a quick little, you know, reward treat with that. Um, and then if the dog is just like, uh-uh, and it's snarling or, you know, the cat's got all the claws out, mm -hmm. just be like, okay, we're, we're done done for today, so don't push their, their limits. Right, I was gonna say, if it's a constant problem, is there any solution for that? I mean, if you just can't get your fingers in your dog's mouth, is it just, just take them to the vet more often, or? They, we may be able to, to help them, and you know, if they're trying to bite us when we're looking at their teeth, we're gonna have to use some of those other items, like the water additive or the, mm -hmm. the, the treats that are really for their teeth and the chew things with that. Okay, so it's a good idea to talk to your veterinarian because there are options. It sounds like, you know, you can mm -hmm. kind of develop a dental plan for any animal. Yes. And is it more difficult with cats? You know, um, yes, I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> We've had groomers say that, you know, they're like, oh, dogs are okay. Cats are really hard to groom. Well, so, well they have these know. claws that mm -hmm. come out. So you're messing with their mouth and here come all their claws. Uh -huh. And it's not just the front claws, it can be the back claws. But like my cats are great for me because I started them when they were they were kittens. Yeah, I was gonna say probably starting early is really that, that key. That is the key. And getting them off now they have less teeth. Right. So thirty to forty two, you right, said there's thirty right. for cats and forty two for dogs. So. They're just smaller and you're working on smaller surfaces mm -hmm. and you're trying to work in their mouth and your fingers are big and it, it is a little more challenging. Okay. Well, Dr. Clyde from Clyde's Animal Clinic over in Mattoon, we appreciate you coming in and talking about animal dentistry. Hopefully everyone's out there with their fingers in their pet's mouth right now. So yeah. thanks again for coming. Thanks. Did you know full episodes of The Paul Report are on YouTube? They can be accessed at youtube.com slash weiutv. Then just go to The Paul Report playlist and select the episode you want to see. More information about the show is also available 24-7 on our website at weiu.net under the television tab.
Have a video or photo of your pet doing something funny or absolutely adorable? We'd love to share it with our viewers here at the Paul Report. Email it to me, Kate, at kfpleasant at eiu.edu, and you can see it on our show. Just make sure it's a video taken by you or that you have permission to share. For more information about how to get that video or photo to us, email me or call us at 581-6960. If you're a veterinarian, trainer, groomer, specialist, rescue organization, or shelter that would like to partner with The Paw Report by providing expert guests for the show or animals to be featured on our Adoptable Pets segment, please contact us by emailing kfpleasant at eiu.edu or call 581-6960. Or if you have a topic you'd like to see on the show or questions for our experts, contact us with those too. Production for the Paul Report is made possible by Midas Auto Service and Tire in Charleston and Mattoon. Midas repairs both cars and light trucks. Midas cares about our community and thanks you for being a responsible pet owner. You deserve the Midas Touch. <laughs>